Yes. <clears throat> okay, good. Okay, so welcome. Welcome. I'm not sure how many of you are on Zoom, but uh, welcome anyway. Uh, my name is uh, Dr. Jonathan Priest. I am the course leader. And uh, there is uh, my colleague also who teaches permanently on the on the MA, uh, Dr. Ben Mason, who's not here today. But um, essentially, uh, we are the kind of permanent staff members. And then the way the course works is that we invite visiting directors to come in and teach. They can run lectures, they can run seminars, they can run workshops in their directorial practice, which you can then participate in. So um, let's let's crack on. Um, this graphic we'll return to at the end. It, it's kind of part, the message here really with this is that there are many different kinds of circus director. That's the point. Um, so these are the modules that we'll do. There are five modules on the course. The first one is a kind of long and thin module. It's uh, called Context and Research Methodologies. And that is basically asking you to undertake a research project, which you designate. The research question you designate, the focus you designate, the area that you'd like to look at. And that might be something to do with uh, theatre and circus, it might be dance and circus, it might be circus and music, it could be soundscape, it could be anything. Okay, that's up to you. And you'll be supported in making that decision. Uh, then there's performer as source, where you will have the chance to direct some work that is made by either our students, alumni uh, of Circa Media who are now working in the professional field, or if you have people in your own networks, circus artists that you know and like to work with already, then you can bring those onto our premises and make this project with those people. Okay, so it might be that you have someone already that you like to work with and you, you decide to make one of the projects that we give you to make with that person or people. Um, then there is the professional collaboration module, which is where you will be given the chance to take up a placement with a working company so you can maybe shadow the director or be given some work to do within that project and that'll be a professional project that's kind of either rehearsal or something like that then there's the director as author module which is where you will again select people that you want to work with either students that we can provide for you to direct or it might be somebody from your own networks again and that's a project where you as the title suggests are more in control of the content and I'll talk a bit more about this. Um, and then, of course, there's the final major project, which is your big ticket item, if you like. OK, um, so as stated in the graphic, there are many different kinds of directors. Uh, so there are many roles and many approaches to meaning production, the production of meaning for an audience or reaching an audience or speaking to an audience. There are many different ways of doing that and many different theories about how that operates. And you'll be given an introduction in the context section of the first module about some of those theories uh, and about how they work in, in a general sense. Um, but generally, you know, each module gives you the opportunity to deepen your own specific approach through dedicated research, reflection and practice. And you'll be supported in those undertakings. OK. Um, this course is for makers of circus, so people who find themselves you know, maybe you're still performing, maybe you are working with a small company, maybe you are someone who comes from a completely different field altogether, from theatre or from the visual arts, or you just have an idea that you want to make circus because you've already had an engagement with it, and you decide that you want to make that work or be more involved in driving it forward. Um, this sometimes implies that you yourself are a performer within the thing that you're making, and that can come with its own challenges and, and contradictions and problems. But we are here, we are very interested in that position because uh, circus work is often self-authored. So we're quite interested in the idea of uh, people who are performing still with their discipline, but also within a company which they are kind of directing as an embedded kind of director. Uh, you may not be from a circus background at all, um, but you might come from a facilitating or directorial or organizational mode in some other practice. Um, but everybody is welcome. That's the point. You know, we are we are open because circus is, uh, you know, it's it's still finding its way. It's still landing in the culture. It's still 
making moves in lots of different areas uh, to understand what its, its own personal voice is. Um, and this mix of styles and approaches is, you know, it, it, the idea is that it's a production of new work and it's the production of new knowledge as well. Um, this course, so then the course is also about the direction for circus, like where is it going? The big question is, what does that mean to direct circus? What positions do you have to take up? What knowledge do you have to have in the first place? How can you be supported to become director of circus? What does that entail? How can we support you to be able to do that? Um, how does your own practice influence that? You know, you as an aerialist or a juggler or an acrobat, what does that, what kind of knowledge do you have that a writer or a painter or a director of film might not have? that enables you therefore to direct circus in, in a circus specific way. Um, so this activation of this idea is, is, is about the sort of, the meeting of two relatively young fields, the young field of artistic research and the young field of circus, contemporary circus specifically, and how those two things come together. Um, and in that sense, there's a lot of unknown territory you know, things to be discovered, things to be investigated, which is why that first module is a research module where we will help you to build a, a research question that's got some legs that will take you on a bit of a journey with your own practice, your own methodology, with your own investigations, okay? Um, and this does two things, I think, the, the idea of this research module or research being present as a feature, um, artistic research specifically being present as a feature in the course, is, is that it's about developing your own voice, but also the uniqueness and the, the specificity of your voice will end up enhancing the waiting field or the waiting sector specifically. Okay. Um, so research is vital. Um, there are not a wider range of established tools in circus research as there are in other fields. Dance has been researched, painting has been researched, uh, film has been researched. And this is another exciting thing about this course. I think that there is less established tools and so the course is open for you to establish tools for the making of circus. Um, and it's also to highlight that there's a practical landing of this work as well. It's not just about making work in the studio for a small cohort of people in the know. This work that we're making is for audiences, people out there, the public. And so any research process will have a bridging period where we will ask you to think about how your specific research, the detail of it, the meaning of it, that may be internal to the practice, how can that be communicated in, in, a, in a wider sense? How can we reach people? And how can we you know, move them? How can we affect them? Okay. Um, so all of these modules really are you refining your practice to move towards this final major project, which will be your presentation of a self-contained, audience-ready and polished piece of performance in which you assume the directorial role in whatever form you feel is effective and appropriate to your particular practice. Okay. Um, so, whilst we do expect you to explore new landscapes, we're not expecting you to do that, you know, just, okay, off you go. You will be meeting um, various established practitioners in the direction of circus. We invite lots of different people to come in and run workshops with you. And those things will then become tools which you can use when you meet the students or your own networks or whatever. Um, and, and the point about this is that, you know, this course operates as a kind of pool of knowledge, if you like. There isn't a course like this anywhere else where there is a pooling of the knowledge of circus directors, which, which they have had to make up out in the field, working on their own, figuring out what does this juggle, what does juggling mean? What does dance and acrobatics mean when it meets each other? We've got lots of practitioners who've spent many, many years in the field making this work, making it up as they go along, 
but they have through their own research practice and their own performance practice they've come up with certain solutions which this course operates as a pool of knowledge for those solutions um, so there are three modules that i teach then so the course is is each module has a leader and i am the leader on context and research methodologies professional collaboration and the final major project so as stated i'll talk a bit more about the research aspect in a minute but those are the three modules that i teach and i'll talk about those individually um, the three modules uh, kind of attempt to address a relationship um, different relationships within the course so this first module the research module is about a relationship to the university or the academy what does it mean to produce a document in circus do we need to devolve to an essay how does a performance end up as something that can be a demonstration of research and how does it land in the academy or the university that's an important question um, the second one uh, which is the professional collaboration which i teach is is that's a relationship to the professional field directly you'll be asked to go and pick a company that you would like to meet and work with and we will help you to make those introductions and then you will head off and hopefully make some engagement meaningful engagement with people who are working right now in the professional field um, and the last one is a relationship to the waiting field the the, the public the audience the the actual sector itself what kind of director are you going to be by the end of this year this this is an important question so there's the idea of dealing with assumptions in the research module dealing with the reality of the professional field funding logistics all of those practical concerns and then dealing with the audience in your final major project how do i reach them how do i speak to them um, the other two modules, which are taught and led by Ben Mason, um, who is um, sort of expert in clown and theatre, physical theatre specifically, um, are performer as source and director as author. And these two modules represent a kind of spectrum, if you like. At one end, you've got the kind of work that often happens with circus directors, where you're being called in to tweak something that's already been made. I already have my act. I want you to come in and give me some theatrical pointers, or I want you to work in a specific style to help me to style my act in a specific way. And in this case, and this work goes on all the time um, and is can be rewarding or not so rewarding, depending on your, your opinion. Um, but essentially, it's more like outside eye work, you know, where you're kind of tweaking. So that's why it's called performer and source because they are the source of the work and you are receiving it, molding it, shaping it and sending it on its way. Um, the other end of that spectrum um, is director as author, where you are as the director uh, come up with your own idea, uh, your own. You are the author of the of the project. You may be envision something that you want to make about a specific issue or topic. And then you come up with methodology in order to make that happen with your small cast of people or big cast of people in some cases. Um, both of these approaches require an in-depth investigation, negotiation, collaboration, devising processes, structural organization, logistical handling, awareness of context and rehearsal planning. So things like that we can help you with. All of those things you will be introduced to on the course you know often when you work with the visiting directors they will have their own techniques of managing a group what's a good thing to what's a good way to begin let's do a check-in to start with see how everybody's feeling things like that so simple tools which will help you to meet the group get the group to trust and then be able to work so things like that will introduce you to um, there are certain feedback methods which will introduce you to as well so ways of giving feedback to a group so that everybody's rights and um, identities are respected um, you'll be introduced to devising processes and will help you with the idea of scheduling. How do I schedule a rehearsal process? What does that mean? And how is the best way to go about it? Um, so those things, um, you will definitely, definitely be sort of 
in the studio making work with others there are lots of logistical things which we can help you with there um, so let's start with the first module okay which is um, as i said context and research methodologies um, the, the it aims to introduce you to kind of history of circus for one thing so you get some context also the history of different theater practitioners and how they have worked with circus artists or worked with physicality um, and that part is led by bim and then the other part that introduces you to frameworks of artistic research and criticality is led by me so this first module goes from roughly late september all the way through to april and at the end of that period it's sort of mid-april you'll be asked to make a piece of work for public dissemination at our venue in portland square so that's very much a long thin process working at the weekends coming in and working with your chosen people i'll be there the whole time to guide you and help you to understand your process and, and what you're doing so you never you know you there's some moments where you'll be left alone to do things but mostly you'll be shadowed and we will help you to make artistic decisions um, yeah, so as, as, as we said before, um, the idea of, you may feel that the artist should, should not be boxed in or captured by academia, you know, being an artist in some people's reckoning is something that should always be outside of any structure. But here we are at master's level, um, and there are certain things that we do have to answer, but we answer them, we try to answer them on our own terms, like what is a circus, submission for a master's degree it's very different from uh, geography for instance um, so there are tensions here between the university and the artistic product the moment of performance how can we capture that um, but it's felt that the tactics of artistic research in their capacity to both recognize the rigors of research practice while simultaneously acknowledging the artist as perhaps uncapturable uh, within existent forms. Um, we are here to assist you in dealing with these tensions. You know, how can I make this performance valid as a submission for a master's degree? Those kind of discussions we will be having all the way through the course about what, what your work means in terms of a, a document, you know. Um, so rather than thinking that we're going to try and shrink fit you as an artist into an academic box, what we're asking the university to do is to expand to accommodate you and this is very much something that circus is about i feel at the moment i feel very strongly that this is an important thing to do circus has to validate itself as an artistic form and one of the ways that we can do this is by directly addressing the university and asking it to expand to accept the forms that we deal with and the forms that we make as artistic and academic documents. Um, okay, so I can do a, a brief summary of some of these slides um, so that we don't get too bogged down, but essentially you could argue that circus tends to be technical in a certain style. You can say that um, I'm going to do clown on the pole. I'm going to do trapeze as a ballerina. I'm going to do um, contemporary dance with my seal wheel, whatever it might be. And I think this is a little bit reductive, but I'm going to say that I think there's, there's definitely a tendency to work in two dimensions only, a technical and an aesthetic dimension. What the MA seeks to do is to introduce a third dimension of criticality and, and awareness of the discourse that is involved in in the in the making of those technical and um, aesthetic things hopefully that's somebody else <laughs> okay i won't dwell on this but the idea of the ma is that we will ask you we will poke you we will challenge you about your assumptions if you have an assumption about circus should be in a certain style we will ask you why do you think that and we'll give you maybe perhaps some devil's advocacy to to talk about why you think that and to poke you a little bit and to prod you and hopefully deepen your understanding of your own practice um, that's the that's the goal here um, the other thing is to develop a meaningful praxis what does that even mean it's an overlapping theory and practice so that when you have a, a theoretical approach you can take it into the studio 
and you can activate it in the studio. And then what happens in the studio will hopefully enhance the way you think about it. Hello. How you doing? We started. You're fine. You're okay. I'll, I'll do a little recap for you when we do the tour around. But we're kind of, yeah, yeah, we're kind of in mid flow, I suppose. I was just talking about the idea of the MA developing a meaningful uh, praxis, which is the overlapping of theory and practice. Okay, the idea of circus at the moment, I feel, is very much about interdisciplinary work. So, circus meeting other forms, dance, theatre film, etc. especially since lockdown, there's been lots of circus on film. Um, and I, what, what I tend to find is that circus, being a younger form, gets swallowed up by those other discourses. Theatre directors will tell circus artists to do certain things in certain ways, which may, not, may or may not be useful to those circus artists. So what we're trying to do here is to set up a two-way street. If you are collaborating with another form, with circus physicality, then the idea is that you can have a dialogue that isn't one way. It's not theatre telling circus how to behave. It's not dance telling circus how to behave. But there's a two way conversation between those two things. So that the knowledge that you have as a circus artist, the things you've discovered about being in the world in certain ways or dealing with objects or dealing with your own body, those things can inform dance and inform theatre as well. Um, uh, the other purpose of artistic research on the course is to strengthen and extend your own practice. To strengthen it for you, so that you have a stronger sense of why you're making the work that you're making, but also to extend your practice so that it might be useful to others in other fields, not just other circus artists or other circus directors, but that it's useful to people in other fields. It might be what you discover in your research as a circus artist might be useful to an architect or a musician or a painter. This is one of the goals of artistic research to find fundamental principles. Um, so new tools for directing. Uh, I think we do generally find that people develop their own approaches to directing on the course because we're very open to people developing their own work, their own way of doing things. This can mean anything from taking an existing method and completely tearing it up and starting from scratch. We're happy if you do that. But also, sometimes developing a new tool for directing can be simply tweaking something that exists somewhere else. So it might be taking an idea from dance practice and tweaking it slightly and applying it to circus and going, hey, this works. This is my way of dealing with this kind of storytelling or this kind of meaning making. Um, either way, tackling these smaller or larger innovations and the spectrum that lies between, between them, you will be supported in answering the rigours of artistic research within a university frame. Other research benefits to go in, deeper into interdisciplinary areas. So figuring out how dance and circus meet is an example. Um, to remain ahead of what your work might mean to a specific audience. The other advantage of doing artistic research on your own practice is that you start to understand it a little bit better. And that will enable you to second guess the kind of things the audience will think and be slightly ahead of the curve. And so to deliver, hopefully, surprising performances, innovative performance, things they haven't seen before. Um, the other benefit is to be able to easily and eloquently explain the need for your work to receive funding. That's another important factor in the UK specifically. The more you understand your work and how you make your work, the easier you will be able to eloquently write those funding proposals and put your hand out for the money that you need to, to carry on with your work. So this is another important thing. And I think a lot of the discussions that we'll be having in seminar form will be directly related to the kind of discourse that you'll need to get into in order to be able to sell your work and to be able to convince people to fund your work. So the way that we speak and discuss your work in the course is directly related to those conversations that you will then have externally with funding bodies. 
Um, and we also invite people in to talk specifically about what funds are available, uh, different things that you can apply for, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so we have a constant sort of eye on, on the field and what, what stipendiums and funds are coming up. And we can, uh, we can help you to navigate that, that landscape. Um, this is about the balance between shown work and written work. And I will sum this up uh, in a very sort of quick way. Um, basically, everything that we ask you to present as a live performance, you will be asked to reflect on in written form. Now, we also acknowledge that the written form is not the ideal way to, to represent circus, but this is a master's degree. And so we do have certain things that we have to submit to the university in order, in order for that to happen. So we are open, perhaps, to new forms of writing. So if it might be that it's appropriate for your practice to submit a blog or a narrative or a fiction that accompanies your work instead of an essay, a reflective essay. If there is a form of writing which perhaps suits better the work that you yourself are making, then we can discuss that. And we're open to those kinds of things. Um, uh, so to this end, we will support, we provide support for you to name what you feel you are doing in your practice so that you can meaningfully hook that concept up to other sources of knowledge and to navigate how best to make your work visible and understandable, as well as how best to answer the need for written submissions. So, we are open to that discussion. Um, independence is key. This is um, an important point. Um, often you'll be shadowed, you know, we'll be in the room with you while you're working with others and if you get stuck you can ask for help no problem but sometimes you will be meeting two or three performers who perhaps you've only just met and you'll be asked to make work with those people there are other independent things like going out and spending some of your time doing research you know looking for other practitioners that might inspire you researching their work looking into how they make work what their methods are and then discussing those with us back on the course but it's important to highlight that you need to be independent in some parts of the course um, to make work um, and to investigate your own work, to make research decisions and conclusions on your own. You'll be checking in regularly with us all the time. So again, if you get stuck, here we are. Um, and you'll be exposed to a considerable, considerable amount of expertise to assist you in your independent work. Um, these are some of the criteria or the aims actually of the first module context and research methodologies. What I'm going to do is I'm going to skip through these quite quickly. Um, and then the recording of this, you'll be able to look at them in more detail. Okay. Um, but they are things like, you know, the, the, the aims are to foster knowledge of research methodologies. They're pretty self-explanatory. Um, the intended learning outcomes. You'll be able to design a research question. You'll be able to articulate knowledge in a sophisticated research um, in a form appropriate to the investigation, etc. These are kind of things, and these are the kind of criteria that we ask you to fulfill. Um, you need to demonstrate, you need to articulate, and you need to engage. So um, again, you can look at those in your own in your own time. I won't read them all out now. Uh, so I want to stress that within this overview of that first module, I'm talking a lot about artistic research. It's a very important feature of the course because of the nature of circus at the moment as being a relatively young form, uh, something that needs investigation, needs deepening, needs investigating, and it needs its assumptions challenging. So this is, you know, it's an important factor and it's important for us that you are free or you feel free enough to do that. Um, Okay, so now I'll go through the other two modules that I teach. The professional collaboration. I kind of talked about this a little bit already. Um, this one, basically, between January and mid-May, you will be free to select a company that is of interest to you. It might be something in Bristol, like Bijou. It might be No Fit State Circus. It might be further afield than that. We have connections to a lot of existing companies already. 
Um, we, they, they have happily hosted people from the course because for them, obviously, it's a free extra body. Um, but the, the benefits of it are that you get to meet people who are actually making work at the moment. People who are actually engaged in maybe re-rehearsing something or rehearsing something fresh, or they might be on tour. So you get to see that. And the, the submission for this module is a kind of a kind of report, if you like. You just write a report on what you've discovered by being embedded in that company for a short time and how that relates to your own ideas about directing. You might see a director who you absolutely hate. You know, I would never do it like this. And that's a valid reflection. Similarly, you might see somebody who absolutely inspires and you go, that's what I want to do. I want to work like this. So those are the kind of reflections that we're looking for, pros and cons, etc. The other advantage to this is you're getting to schmooze a little bit as well and meet people in the field and make connections, uh, which is only going to enhance your ability to then recontact those people once you're done and go, hey, remember me? Um, have you got any work? That kind of thing. Um, and also talking to them about where they get their funding from is another advantage. How do they structure and organize and fund their own work? That's you know, a vital conversation always to be had. Um, these are the module aims again for this. I'm gonna skip through these quite quick. You'll be able to slow this down and see them on the recording. Um, this has quite a large list of criteria. And the idea is that you pick three or four of them. So this one very much you will be able to style the way that we mark you uh, by picking criteria that you feel suits your experience that you've had with that company. Final major project speaks for itself. You are the, you are the author of this one. This one is the big project which runs over the summer. Um, pretty much from the end of June right through to September. Working on these premises or elsewhere, if you, if you have networks elsewhere that you want to work with. That was something I mentioned before, that the directing of the work, when we give you a project to direct, you will be able to work with students here or ex-students, alumni, that we can, there's always a, a group of them that you can work with if you need bodies to direct, or if you already work with an existing group, you can invite them onto the premises and then work with them. Um, if, if you have those kind of networks, that's also really possible. So if you have people that you already like working with and maybe have already got a language established with, you can bring them on to the course and direct them on our premises. Um, as with the other modules, the form and content of this live work is yours to decide in consultation with your tutor. And it should be a kind of crystallization of the previous four modules, really. Everything that you've learned on the research, working as a performer, as source director, working as an author, and looking at the professional field, all of those things should hopefully feed into your approach, your methods, and your way of assembling your final major project. It's like a 30 minute show is what we're asking you to make there at the end. Um, and it's a statement of your own vision of what it means for you to be a circus director. Uh, again, here are the module criteria, which you can look at in your own time. Module aims provide a platform from which to undertake a substantial field of inquiry and or professional practice. Um, yep, these are the intended learning outcomes. Uh, you can look at those as well and these are the criteria so there's this last one here which is quite interesting it's to use initiative take responsibility and solve problems in creative and innovative ways there are always problems when you make circus and we will always be there to kind of extricate you from your own mess if you like but it's it's also how you yourself you know Deal with those things creatively you know that a mistake or a, a problem can always be dealt with creatively and i think that's that's definitely a feature of this last module is you will hopefully by then be you know more well versed in how to deal with a group how to deal with content how to deal with form and how to reach an audience um, so it's acknowledged Finally, really, um, 
that some things can be hard to get hold of. You know, we as artists, we deal with affect, you know, something that happens in the room between people can be hard to validate and ratify within the university. And I think we, we are very aware of this contradiction in dealing with artistic practice and how it's validated on a master's degree. Um, and those discussions are ongoing and we are open to your own approach to making work. Um, I think that's all I can say about that. The university deals in facts and we deal in affects. Um, so what do you get? Um, I'll sum it up by saying this. Making circus with us gives you access to professional studios and willing circus bodies to direct. Making circus with us means you can still be working with your professional networks to devise your new work on our premises. Making circus with us will place you in direct contact with experts in the field in seminars, lectures and workshops. Making circus with us entails expert tuition in deepening and widening your creative and critical capacity. Making circus with us will enable you to clearly communicate your culturally relevant projects to a wide range of funding bodies. Making circus with us places you with working circus companies as they make and rehearse work for the professional environment. And finally, making circus with us will challenge you, but ensure that your voice is heard in the sector. The course designed for you to develop your vision as a director of circus. There's a short film here. Should we look at this? People want to see the film before yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, good. Okay, thank you. Let's 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 just rewind that because I'm not sure how the audio might work with this. That's why. That's why. No. Yeah. Yeah. Sound. No sound. Yeah. We can't hear it in here. Though. I'd love to. But I don't know how to do it. It is on full volume. You're doing so well. Yeah, okay, let's do that. I can have it on now playing violently um, for those in the room. I could ask, I mean, we could take this moment to. We could take this moment to to answer some questions. Try to do it so that, that at least once a week we all get end up in the same room. That's really what that's really what we need. To be able to talk like this is, is kind of vital to, to to discuss your work. That you know we make allowances. Sometimes you might be, let's say you're doing a professional collaboration module and you're away, or you're making something for a project that we've given you, not on this site but somewhere else. It could be a site specific thing and you can't come in then we would zoom with you. but it would be pretty much that what we're trying to foreground is, is is this sort of setting you know yeah yeah i mean um i think also that like, um, hours of the time is obviously it's mostly stuff that go into doing research and coming in using space or whatever but um like how many hours are actually like yeah okay so so basically because we the ba is happening here right now okay so the school's very full so what we tend to do is we tend to try and operate in the in the we tend to operate around the ba but that basically means that your week runs from something like wednesday thursday friday saturday and sunday so saturday and sunday 
you're in here all day, hopefully working with bodies in the space, or you might be attending a workshop, or you might be, you know, with us doing seminars or something like that. On Fridays, there are usually lectures, which might be, sometimes they're all day, and sometimes they're kind of half days. There are also things at Bath Spa to attend in the first term only, things where you get to see work from other people on the course. Other people, sorry, I, I can explain it like this. The three modules that I teach are also taught in different versions for different cohorts on the bar, in Bath Spa University. So the dance line will also be taught research and context. The dance line will also have their own version of the professional collaboration module. Um, the theatre line has its own version of the final major project, etc. Um, so there are those. Um, there's a lot of reading to be done. There's a lot of your own research and stuff. It's about 35 hours a week of work to be done every week is what we... Because an MA is usually two years, right? So that we're... It's, it's busy. You can do it part time, it's over two years. So you get, you know, you'll just have a longer run up to things, and your timing of submissions will be offset, yeah. slightly offset, yeah. That's, that's. Yeah, there's lots of different contingencies that you could take up if you realise, oh, oh, you know, I'm overwhelmed here. I need to, I need to take a longer run up to this. There are different things. Ideally, it's better for us if we know whether you're going to do two or one year. I mean, it's just cleaner. Everything's cleaner. We obviously the course is accredited by Bar Spa, so we've got our own liaising to do with that, with the way they systemise things. So knowing everything in advance is always better for us and for you, really. Yeah. You've had more questions. Uh, funding, just because I don't know that much about the master's funding, and obviously I've had a look um, just to understand it. Yeah, I think that might be again, yeah, Jade. So you currently, I just checked, so there's up to the fees, so you are allowed eleven thousand eight hundred and thirty-six pounds um, on for um, a master's loan. Um, they pay you in three instalments. Roughly a third each third of the course, uh, just like with normal university funding. Yeah. Um, it's not so the difference compared to other degree funding is it's not based on any financial situation you're in in the moment, it's not means tested, it's not based if you are a family, it's not based on your family income or anything like that. It's just a, everyone gets that amount. Um, the only criteria is that you have to. I've not had one before. Um, not to be receiving undergraduate funding at the moment. So, I mean, some people do do a master's course alongside. I don't know how, but some people can choose to do that. But they won't fund you if if you need to do that. Um, and you have to be a UK citizen or have a status. Um, and I guess that would just be connected with part. Yeah, I think what they would do, I need some chat, I think they give you the money, it's, um, so if you decide at the top of your media that you want to go part time, they would still give you the money, but then it's up to you to make sure that you make it easier. And then if you decide that you're going part time, right at the beginning, Bar Spa will obviously only 
request half your fees each yeah. year. They won't request it on one go, but it might be you know, if you get your the master's funding, then you do just pay for it one go when it's done, and then it's really up to you of how long it takes you to come. Oh, we're picking this now. Really, I, I wanted it full time. One of the reasons for doing part time is when I need to work alongside, but maybe not work for Yeah, I mean, I don't know what I'd like some people have. I mean, the, so, the, so the course fee is 7,715. So, you know, that roughly is about five grand of the fee that's for you for maintenance, for living, for resources for all of that stuff so, so that's good. yeah so um it's like time it's it, yeah it depends on people's personal circumstances really um it also so if you are in receipt of any kind of uh, benefit or anything like that um i don't think it does affect that but you might just want to double check because they change the rules in the year. So um, maybe get your personal credit or anything like that. Just double check how it affects you. Because there was also something about um, funding for people from the southwest. But I don't know what difference that made for you. Was that the big grant? Um, so we don't. So this year was the last year for the yeah. grant. Um, so yeah, that's that's not available. 